Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all having a lovely day. So today I wanted to return to a common segment on this channel, Lewis Rage Reads the News. I was, I actually do get a physical copy of Bloomberg from time to time here at this office, and uh, I do read it from time to time. There was an article today on relationships, and I found myself rage reading the news, so I thought I would share it with all of you. To be clear, before, the, you know, state everything up front, I am not going to be viewing statistics or viewing a bunch of scientific studies to make my point here. This is really going to be anecdotally driven. So if that's something that would disappoint you, I would highly suggest you click X now so that you are not raging at your screen the same way I was raging at this article. Most of my objection with this started at the third paragraph in, so let's get started. And let me know, do you think I have a point or do you think I'm full of shit? So it says, if your wife makes more than you do, read this. Too many women still have to choose between their professional aspirations and relationship success. It's up to men to defy damaging cultural expectations. There's been a huge shift in the way people date and marry in recent decades. As the stereotype goes, successful men used to marry their secretaries. Now, people choose spouses with similar levels of education and earnings. The phenomenon is called assortative mating. But smart, successful women still have to navigate enormous landmines in their romantic relationships with men. Of course, not all women want to be in relationships or get married. According to a 2020 Pew survey, just 38% of single American women are looking for dates or a relationship. But if women are seeking romantic relationships and they're uber successful, they often have to choose between career success and romantic success. To change this ugly part of our culture, we need to radically rethink our conceptions of masculinity. Part of the problem is that many men don't want to be in relationships with women who they perceive as smarter than they are. Pause. See, th this, this is the problem, and this is the part that where, like, not, I, I don't know if it's people just watching too much television or what. Not every man is Archie Bunker, Homer Simpson, Ralph Cramden or something where it's like, you can't get a job, Alice. Um, you know, I, one of my best lunch dates that I ever had was with this one woman who was just discussing sector math with me. So I don't know how we got into this as a conversation. This is a really long time ago, so I'm going to be butchering some of the stuff in the paraphrasing. But I was going over how a Western Digital SSD was running cooler than a Samsung, and she actually took the waiter's little pad and pen and asked if she could borrow it for a second, and she started explaining the difference in the sector math used by that Samsung drive on, of that era and the Western Digital one and their NANs and everything, and explaining that the Western Digital did not have to do as much work because of the sector math involved and how it dealt with the sector math or whatever when it was you know putting data on it and how this was more efficient and allowed it to run cooler i have never been that attracted to a woman in my life like oh my god i mean like, what do i do for a living like i take flux and pour it on shit and go oh i'm heating it up oh it works now let me just finish my recording for youtube and collect my money I'm not that smart. I found this incredibly amazing. Now, there were other reasons that we were not able to date or pursue a relationship because there were a number of problems that that person had to solve in their life before they'd be ready for a relationship. And that's, that, that's, that's, a top, that's actually not, just not a topic for YouTube in general. Not fit for a relationship, somebody I could be friends with, and uh, a, a great human being. But that was attractive. I'd be lying if I didn't say that that was insanely attractive. It was one of the most attracted I remember being to somebody in the middle of a lunch date ever. Just the fact that you knew all this. This woman was really, really smart. I would say, like, you know, one of those 160 or 180 plus IQ people that's just somewhat detached from the rest of the world because their brain works on such a different level than everybody else's, like hardware engineer, software engineer, all this other stuff. That was hot. I'm, I'll be honest. That, that was hot. Like, I, I found my brain interpreted that the same way that many other dudes interpret just, you know, uh, seeing, you know, a, a thirst trap on Instagram or something. And there are a lot of men that I know that are like that. Like, I don't mind being around people that are smarter than me. I kind of prefer it. I mean, my, my employees, most of them are smarter than me. Um, you know, I, I kind of enjoy intelligence in somebody that I'm dating. And if they're smarter than me to the point that they can actually teach me things or point out things I'm doing that are stupid, then I'm all for it. And there's really only one person I know in my life that wouldn't be for that or that would be threatened by that. It's one of the, uh, he's from uh, Eastern Europe and he has kind of like this very, very old schoolish mentality when it comes to a lot of things like this in relationships. But other than that one person, I really don't know anybody that's like, you know what? You seem smarter than me. I'm not dating you. I just... I don't see that happening. What I do see happening is when I do meet women that are considerably smarter than me, they show limited to no interest in me, which is understandable because they're that much smarter than me. Why would you be into a dude that does nothing all day but pour flux on motherboards and heat it up? Like, it's, I'm not blaming you, but it's just interesting. Now, they did link to a study where they said that they found that when a man is, thinks a woman is smarter than he is, he becomes less interested in her. And a lot of this study, when you read a good portion of it, it's just like they're going over marriage rates declining when a woman earns more money that you know a, a couple is less willing to match if her income exceeds his but when you read a lot of the language that's used in this study not the man the couple 
they don't say the like get they're stating it as if it's a mutual decision they're not saying like this man it is ruining the relationship as a result of it it does seem a bit like it's a mutual thing and again when it comes to money this is another one that i find interesting you know i have never in my life been in a relationship with somebody that made more than 30 to 40 percent of my salary like 30 to 40 percent max even when i was making four to six hundred dollars a month the same held true it didn't matter whether i was making four to six hundred dollars a month making forty thousand a year making over a hundred thousand a year or you know when i destroyed my company and i went back to making four to six hundred dollars a month uh over ten years ago and then went back up and wherever i was on my journey it's, it's very interesting how this has worked out and it's been very very consistent now, I don't believe that's because I'm purposely seeking out people that make less money. It could be, uh, you know, but I, I don't believe that's the case because I really don't have a problem with somebody making more money than me. Most of the bad decisions that I've made over the past 12 or 13 years have been based on a fear of financial insecurity. I need to do this thing to make money now because I may not in the future. What if this happens? What if that happens? If I was going out with somebody that made more money than me, then that would go away. Like literally, like, again, I'm, to be clear, I'm not trying to say that I would expect my spouse or my partner to pay my way through life. Not at all. I'm a very independent person. I like pursuing things. I like working. I like finding new things to do to add value to the world. But if, you know, Susan Wojcicki hit the button on my channel that she hit on Eli's channel to nerf his down a, you know, 500 views a video at the same time that my store collapsed and crumbled or whatever because of a bunch of inspectors from New York State coming in or something. If, if my life just completely became a giant crater, I would at least know that I could fall back on the fact that my, that I, my spouse was going to have my back. And uh, I, I really have absolutely no problem dating somebody that makes more than me, even somebody that just makes as much as me. But it's very interesting because over the past 13 or so years, because I think, you know, before I was 20 years old, I, I, I don't think most of my dating life was even remotely serious. I don't know what the hell I was looking for. But, the, but like for the past 13 or 14 years, I've really, I, I've never been, I've never gone out with somebody uh, regularly that made more than 30 to 40% of my income. And again, when I look at that group of people that are making more, I'm kind of invisible. Again, like, you know, if you're talking about women that make two to five or 10 times my salary, the, I'm going to make a radical statement here. I don't think they're looking for a dude that puts flux on motherboards and heats it. I just, I think they're looking for something else. I think, and, I, and I, that's not me. And again, I, I, no problem with that whatsoever. That's, you know, feel free to go for whoever you want in life. And I hope that you get it. I'm not mad. It's just, but, but it, 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 there's always this kind of implication that it's like the guy is the reason. You know, he doesn't want to go out with somebody because he's intimidated by a woman that's smarter, has more money. No, I, I'm happy. It's just, uh, I'm, I, I, something tells me that I'm not what they would be looking for. Uh, but interesting study. I'll have a link down below if you want to read it. It says, uh, 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 women who are usually successful in their careers have said they think it hurts their romantic prospects. As Maureen Dowd wrote in her book, Are Men Necessary? When Sexes Collide, the day one of her friends won the Pulitzer, the woman called her, quote, in tears, saying that as a result, she'd never get a date. Federal judge Frederick Block wrote in his book that Sonia Sotomayor considered turning down her nomination to the Supreme Court because she knew it hurt her dating life. Uh, I thought that was more about some of her recent de uh, decisions in the past two months, but that was that, that's something totally separate. To state the obvious, successful men don't tend to have this problem. A woman is also less likely to marry a man if she makes more money th uh, than he does. Finally, a little bit of acknowledgement. A large-scale analysis of census data by Marian Bertrand and Amir Kamenenka of University of Chicago and Jessica Pan of the National University of Singapore found that in places where women are more likely to out-earn men, there are fewer marriages. Yes, because maybe women don't want to go out with people that make less than them. There was this... I haven't had a lot of experiences like this. I do remember one lunch date like seven years ago. There was this uh, really cute entrepreneur that came into the store. Uh, she kind of lingered for like a half hour or 45 minutes after the repair was done. I asked if she wanted to go to lunch when I closed, and we did, and she was excited. And we had a, it, was, it was an interesting walk on the way there. When we actually sat down to talk, I kind of felt like I was her pet. I don't know how else to explain this. I really don't. Like, I, I've... I've heard the concept of, you know, a man being intimidated by a woman that makes more or that is successful. That really didn't seem, I, I wouldn't say intimidated is the word to use. I felt like she saw me the way I see Blackberry or Mr. Clinton. You know, like when I see Mr. Clinton, I'm like, hello, Mr. Clinton, you're so cute. Good boy. And then I pet him. Like, 
but I'm not Mr. Clinton, you know? I'm not Blackberry. I'm not a cat. I'm a, like, I'm a man. I'm an equal or a partner or whatever. And um, I don't know what other people's experiences are like with that. I haven't had a lot of experiences to go out with people that make, you know, multiples, uh, multiple times more than I have. But the very few times I have, I've always kind of felt like a pet. Like, you know, oh, is it, or, in, or in you cute, Lewis. And it's just something that's not, um, I don't know. I just, I, I really genuinely hope that when I've gone out with women that made less than me, that I didn't make them feel that way. I hope I didn't. I really do. You know, I, I have a decent uh, enough standing with some of the exes that I have. And we've talked after the relationship about things that worked, things that didn't work. Um, and that was never one of them. You know, I've gone out with people that were still going through school, people that were working like the crappy end of a job or the, you know, an internship that was long before they get to a, a you know, the, the real part of the job or the, you know, the promotion or I'm, I'm misusing the words there, but you get the idea. Like, and, and I, just because I made more money than them, it wasn't like, oh, you're so cute, you little failure. I, I never really kind of talked to them like that. I, I didn't condescend them based on it. I just figured you're in a different place in your life journey right now than I am and more power to you. I mean, at the end of the day, you have a quote, real job. And I have a, I don't know, a business that at any given point in time, if Apple wanted to just get rid of, they could just liquid proof their products and then I'm back to working at Model Sporting Goods. I never really looked down on them for it, but I had this feeling that I was being looked down upon and it was very clear and evident at the time. And it just, it, it wasn't uh, something that I imagine is conducive to being in a relationship with somebody. I can't be in a relationship with somebody that talks to me as if I'm a pet. If a woman who is in a position to out her her husband does get married, she'll likely jump through hoops to avoid making him feel emasculated, according to the study. And she's less likely to work at all. If she does work, she's more likely to earn less than she could. And if she does earn more than her husband, she's likely to try to make up for it by doing even more housework. She's also likely to pretend she earns less than she really does. A paper released by the Census Bureau in 2018 found that women make more, when women make more money than their husbands, they often underreport their income to census surveyors. Okay, that's an interesting one. But See, this whole thing, she's likely to try to make up for it by doing even more housework. This is actually an argument that I've, this is an argument that I have had in the past within my relationships, which is like, I work, if I work my ass off and I have a problem with workaholism and not having fun and you work your ass off and you have, you are, have a problem with not having fun, honestly, just stop. Let's just stop. I mean, if we have enough money together to be able to hire a maid like give her 200 bucks to clean up the apartment so that we could go out and have fun. Um, and, uh, and I, I remember I've said this, like I, you know, you're a, you're a girlfriend. You're not a maid. I don't see you as a maid. I don't want you to be a maid. I want to pay so that we could have a maid for at least just for this month or just to treat ourselves so that we could go out and enjoy ourselves. And that's happened. It's like the last two or three relationships that I've been in, which is, and I, I don't know if this, I don't know if it's maybe, I came off as passive aggressive or something, or maybe they thought I'm saying this as a way to say I have to get him. And I had this conversation with one of them at the end. I said, do you think when I say I'm going to get a maid that that's like I have to get a maid because my girlfriend can't clean for shit? Because that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I would like to hire a maid for this week so that we could spend the time that we would otherwise spend doing this cleaning stuff, actually going out and enjoying ourselves because I spent, you know, 17 through 32 or 17 through 28 uh, working my ass off all the time, not making time for my personal life. And I'm going to make up for that by using some of the money that I made during that time to hire somebody to clean this area so that we can enjoy ourselves. Um, but despite or perhaps because of all this, if a woman is the breadwinner of the household, she and her husband are likelier to be unhappy. Experienced relationships strive for get divorced, according to the census data analysis. When women experience other kinds of career success, it can also jeopardize their relationships. One study found that women who won Academy Awards for Best Actress remained in their relationships for 67% less time afterward than men who won Best Actor awards. Even research out of supposedly egalitarian Sweden found that winning government office doubled a woman's chance of divorce. And again, this doesn't really... This doesn't really uh, discuss whether or not it's the guy saying, you're more successful than me, I'm leaving, versus the woman could also be making the choice of, I'm just not that into you anymore because I have, I've made it to the next level. It's, it, the, this is indeed a possibility, and that does not necessarily have to do with masculinity. Like If somebody is not interested in me anymore because they've climbed to the next level, um, that is, is that a problem with masculinity? Again, if I'm dating somebody and that person who used to be 
something like, I don't know, let's say they worked at the post office, right? You work at the post office. And that person then goes from just working at the post office to being a postmaster general or, you know, having a position in the White House or something. Again, like, is it my masculinity or is it maybe, again, once you've climbed to that point, dating somebody whose idea of work is spread flux on board, heat it up, call it done is just maybe not interesting anymore. I'm just throwing that out there. The intersection of women's success and expectations of masculinity could well be one reason there aren't more women in top leadership positions. Women who go out into the world and do great things should make their families proud. When women earn outsized salaries, their families, including the men, benefit from those resources. I agree with that 100%. And again, this is one of the reasons that I'd have no problem dating women. (laughs) that make more money than me. I, I, at any point in my life, whether it was to the point where I was making six figures, the point where I was making $600 a month, or anywhere in between. Again, as I've said, I'm probably repeating myself, every stupid decision I've made in my life, like the really bad ones, have been based on a fear of not having a secure financial future. And one of the things that would probably have limited me making some of those bad decisions was knowing that I had something to fall back on, so I wouldn't have made decisions based on anxiety or fear or some sort of fear for the future in the same way. Um, Again, not trying to say that I would leech off of a a woman, but if I knew that if the worst possible doomsday case scenario happened that I'm not screwed as badly as I would be on my own, then, again, I'm I'm happy to do that. I have absolutely no problem with that. There are enthusiastically supportive men out there, of course. Second gentleman Doug Emhoff and Vice President Kamala Harris started dating when she was already California's attorney general, and he put his own high-powered law career on pause to support her political aspirations. My own husband, a physician, would do the same if I wanted to run for office. But the list of such men in the public eye isn't long. Where are the Hollywood romantic comedies about men who romantically pursue women CEOs? Their absence is a problem because men privately say they feel pressure to live up to society's expectations, concepts, conceptions of masculinity, even when they don't like or, d- or agree with them. Okay, two things there. A- Fuck Hollywood rom-coms. Seriously, like just fuck sitcoms, fuck rom-coms, fuck all that crap to begin with. It's not realistic. Not every man is Archie Bunker. Not every man is Homer Simpson. Not every man is Ralph Cramden. I don't care about Ralph Cramden or Homer Simpson or Archie Bunker or any of the other fucks. They're all fiction. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about how their men are portrayed in the media. I care about myself. But more importantly, where are the Hollywood romantic comedies about men romantically pursuing women CEOs? Again, this, this is just, again, one of those purely anecdotal things. Like, I know people that are wealthy that, net, that just, they don't care. If they, if they, again, if they meet somebody that's kind of interesting, has a nice personality and is into them, that don't really care if the, if the woman is worth, like, you know, making fifteen to 30000 bucks a year. It's just not a big problem to them. I don't know a single woman that is well-off or wealthy that is open to dating somebody that makes fifteen to 30000 bucks a year. They, like, wouldn't see it as kind of a weird problem. And again, maybe that says something about my social circle. Maybe that says something about how fucked up my social circle is. As I said, this is anecdotal. But like, why are there not romantic comedies about men romantically pursuing women CEOs? Again, the, because for the most part, men that make like 30, 15 to $30,000 tend to be invisible to women that make million, tens of millions. It's just, I mean, I, I, this feels like common sense, but it's um, not to this article. Their absence is a problem because privately men say, ah, I read that part already. The solution starts with recognizing the problem. Once we appreciate what successful women are up against, we can look to men to treat them differently and change our cultural tropes about masculinity and strength. Then more men might have a change of heart about relationships with successful women and making them work. At the end of the day, I don't think that I disagree with some of the material in this article. Again, when they say that a relationship is less likely to work, a match is less likely to work out based on that income disparity, I'm not saying that that's not true. What I'm saying is that that last paragraph there, that conclusion, is the part that I have an issue with, which is that the issue is with masculinity and cultural tropes about masculinity and strength that are why successful women are not keeping relationships with these men. I think maybe, maybe, just maybe a small part of it has to do with the fact that, again, on average, in my experience, I have never found a woman who found me interesting other than a pet that made more money than me. I'm open to it. Maybe it's out there. Maybe I'll find him someday. But that's just it hasn't been my experience uh, and uh, it hasn't been the experience of any of the people that I know I don't like 
I'm open to it. I'd love to see it. You know, again, if, if there's like a multimillionaire out there that finds the love of their, and she finds the love of her life in a grocery store, bagging of groceries, like more power to it. It's just, I don't see that being the case. And I think that there's just a little bit more to that than an issue with masculinity or cultural stereotypes. And I think, again, I'm not blaming people for this. I'm not blaming women for this, but I just think a small part of it may be you, you might not be into dudes that are broke. Like, is, is that okay to say? I, mean, you, I, I, don't, I don't even mind if you're not into men that are broke. I don't mind if you're not into men that make less than you. I don't mind if a female CEO is not into a garbage man. I just wish that it could be said that that was the case rather than it being somehow an issue with masculinity or strength. There's probably a lot of garbage men that really would have no problem dating a female CEO. Uh, but I don't think that there are a lot of female CEOs to take interest in the garbage man. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.